Shaking Coffee Lovers, today I've got another review for you. And it is a coffee review, a single origin, and yet another one from that batch that I was sent from Black Oak Coffee Roasters. This is the Ethiopia Hambella Alaka. And another good one. Uh, I'll give you a look at the bag here, but they are a bronze medal winner for espresso, I believe it was, at this year's 2017's Golden Bean Awards. So I already reviewed the Ethiopia Chaleltu, which was their gold medal winner, but this is a bronze medal winner and also a nominee for the 2018 Good Food Awards. So getting some attention already and I thought that it was well deserved. Um, so they note peach candy and jasmine tea and we cup this one. Um, I brewed it through various methods and I'll just go through those in a minute but I'll kind of give you the overview of the cupping amongst four other coffees three others were from Black Oak. One was uh, an espresso blend, so it was kind of the odd man out there, but this one probably fell within uh, second and third favorite of the group. Uh, it wasn't the standout, I mean, that was the Chalautu, but this one had some more subtle uh, flavor notes and, and things that were to be desired. So, I'll just take a look at my notes here from this cupping and tell you kind of what some of my friends who are not coffee experts, not to say that I am, but they, they've just never done coffee cupping before. And um, you can kind of see what they were tasting. So first let me tell you what I picked up. So um, the aroma I thought was kind of a darker chocolate um really pleasurable as it seems to be the as seems to be the case with all of their coffees they just have remarkable aromas and they were roasted fresh so that clearly has something to do with it now when it was brewed i was picking up more herbal and floral notes in the aroma so it, it shifted from that chocolate whole bean aroma, or, or sorry, ground coffee aroma, to when water was added, it shifted more towards what their notes on the bag say. Um, and then when I separated the grounds, you know, kind of cleared the crust from the surface, I even picked up pine needles, which I thought was weird. And others were saying, you know, um, one person wrote log as a ground coffee aroma, so um, woody, I guess you would say. And then for the actual uh, brewed coffee aroma, somebody put cigar. So a lot darker notes uh, from a lot of the people that got to try this. Now, as far as how it tasted, I initially picked up something that was quite acidic, so like a sour lemon. Um, we had people saying that it was pretty heavy in terms of body. Um, one person wrote pretty sour. So um, there were some pretty bad notes for this in terms of how it cupped. Now, that isn't to say that it didn't do well when it was brewed in a more official manner through uh, a coffee maker. So what I started with was my Be More Connected, and I was picking up floral, jasmine type flavor notes in that. Um, then as I continued to experiment, I, I tried um, some espresso, and it was completely different. It was like a, a thick cherry syrup, and um, that's kind of the only note that I had for espresso. Um, French press, sour. So that was kind of interesting because 
Um, I like to think of French press as, as kind of the closest brew method to what a cupping experience provides because it's full immersion. So if I were to draw a conclusion about how this coffee performs as through the immersion method, I would say probably easier to under extract. However, this cup here that I just brewed with the American press, which is also pretty much full immersion, uh, think of it as a cross between the French press and the AeroPress. This one was a lot more balanced, a lot less sour. It does have those woody kind of notes up front, for sure, that a lot of the people were picking up. But then what's very interesting is that the aftertaste shifts to that peach. I was like, eh, peach, what are you talking about? And then I was just sitting there, hadn't had a sip for about 30 seconds, and all of a sudden I'm tasting peach. Now, that could have just floated into my head because that's what I saw in the bag, but um, I did notice that it was present in the aftertaste, whether it was invented or actually accurate. So those floral notes were also still there in this cup. but more subtle than I think a lot of the brew methods revealed. Um, Hario V60, I would say, was my favorite brew with this because I did get those florals, but I also got some cantaloupe in there, which I thought was very interesting, and that was kind of more the aftertaste as well. So overall, I would say that this one is not going to be great for kind of your more immersion brew methods. I would for sure recommend this for pour over though. Hario V60, you will get some interesting notes out of it. And you probably would want to go on the finer side, maybe extract a little bit more. So if you are going to go with immersion, maybe think a little bit finer grind than what you're normally doing, or a slightly longer brew time. You could also experiment with slightly higher temperatures. So one other thing I want to tell you about this coffee is where it comes from. So obviously it comes from Ethiopia as it says here and I've already stated, but it comes specifically between the Sidama and Guji zones, which are very popular growing regions. This estate um, apparently started way back, um, and I'll just read the story so I don't butcher it, but uh, the coffee farm itself is managed by Aman Adinu of the Hambela estate, which is located, as I said, in southern Ethiopia on the border of the Sidama and Guji zones. Uh, it's a coffee farm with roots going back to the Ethiopian emperor Hale Selassie, a land grant by Emperor Selassie to Mul Mulembet, Amiru, Africa's first female, female pilot and family matriarch, created the coffee growing estate. So three generations later, Ambella employs over 70% women. This is a region that I've reviewed before in another coffee, and I remember that they do um, employ a lot of women, and then it provides technical assistance to local farmers and was the first organization to par partner with Grounds for Health in Ethiopia to implement a cervical cancer screening program. And then just some of the specs of the coffee that I know of is that it is the indigenous heirloom variety and it is a washed coffee. So you really kind of pick up distinctions, in, especially through the processing methods. The Chalaktu kind of had more fruity notes and it was naturally processed. And so I guess a lot of what came from the fruit remained in the bean. I mean, you could have that hypothesis. Um, and then when it's a washed coffee, you're going to pick up different, completely different flavor notes. So this is, once again, Black Oak Coffee Roasters. Ukiah, California is where they're from. And this is the Hambela Alaka, which comes from the Hambela Estate. They're doing great things over there, and you should check out this coffee. It is USDA certified organic. It is a 2018, as I said, nominee 
for the Good Food Awards and a bronze medal winner in the 2017 Golden Bean Awards. So check it out. Not my favorite in the most recent batch that I received, but it is a very good coffee. And it is $17.50 currently for 12 ounces on the Black Oak site. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time in another coffee review or maybe something else.